In this program, we'll show you the basic equipment necessary for climbing, how to determine its proper fit, how to inspect it, care for it, and how to wear it. We'll also demonstrate the proper techniques for ascending, descending, and maneuvering of the situations that a lineman routinely encounters. Along the way, we'll offer advice and helpful hints for making your climbing safer, easier, and more comfortable. After that, it's up to you and your instructor to develop the proper skills and attitude to be able to climb. The first step in developing the proper mental attitude for climbing is to know your equipment and to learn to trust by looking at the basic equipment needed for climbing. It consists of body belt, climbers, and a safety strap along with other safety equipment that is outlined in your safety manual. Depending on the manufacturer, your equipment may come in different styles and with different features. For this program, we'll concentrate on the things that all climbing equipment has in common. Let's begin with the belt. The body belt is generally made of a combination of leather and nylon. This type of construction ensures structural strength and durability. The belt has a broad cushion section to provide support and comfort when working on a pole. There are also loops riveted into the belt for carrying tools and provisions for attaching tool pouches and other accessories. The metal loops on either side of the belt are called D-rings. D-rings are only used for attaching a safety strap around a pole for support. Nothing else should ever be connected to the D-ring. We'll discuss the reasons for this later. Right now, let's take a closer look at the D-ring. On this belt, the D-rings are permanently attached and move independently of the belt. This is known as a floating belt field of maneuverability on a pole. The most important consideration when choosing a belt is proper fit. Depending on the manufacturer, you may have to determine the fit by the D-ring size, waist size, or both. Let's watch an experienced climber show a new recruit how to determine these sizes. The guy on the left is Bo. He's our instructor for this video. The man on the right is Jeff. The first thing that Bo wants Jeff to know is how to determine the proper size belt for climbing. Bo starts by showing Jeff how to determine the right D-size. D-size refers to where the D-rings are positioned on the hips. Ideally, the D-ring should sit just outside of the hip bone. To start, find the prominent bones of the hip. Next, measure from hip bone to hip bone across the back. In Jeff's case, the measurement is 2 feet or 24 inches. According to the manufacturer of these belts, the proper D-ring size is determined by adding 2 inches to the hip-to-hip -hip measurement. That gives us a total of 26 inches. To Jeff must measure from the heel of one D-ring to the heel of the other D-ring. He places a measuring tape on the heel of the first D-ring and measures down the belt to the other D-ring. The measurement is exactly 2 feet 2 inches or 26 inches. The D size is correct. Bo also shows Jeff that the D size is stamped on the belt. The indication D26 and Jeff that the measurement from D ring to D ring is 26 inches. In some cases, manufacturers may also use waist sizes to determine proper fit. Waist size for climbing belts is actually the measurement around the body at the hips. In this case, the waist size is 3 feet 9 inches. Bo will now Jeff how to check this measurement on the belt. The measurement is made from the roller on the belt buckle to the center hole of the belt tongue. The belt measures 3 feet 9 inches, which is the same as Jeff's waist size. The waist size is also correct. The procedures for determining D size and waist size may differ slightly from manufacturer to manufacturer. However, the principles and points of measurement are the same. Of course, the final test for this proper fit is to actually put the belt on. The belt should fit comfortably on the hips without being too tight. The heels of the D-rings should rest just outside of the prominent bones of the hip. It's primarily for comfort when working off of a pole. The next pieces of equipment we'll look at are the climbers, or hooks, as they are sometimes called. Climbers come in pairs, consisting of a J-shaped metal stirrup, straps for attaching the climbers to the feet, and a metal spur called a gaff. Climbers are worn on the legs, and the gaffs are driven into the wooden pole. Climbers support the weight of the lineman while climbing. 
When not climbing, the gaffs should be protected by gaff guards. Like body belts, climbers must fit properly. Some climbers are fixed lengths and ordered by sizes. Others, like these, can be adjusted. Let's watch as Bo teaches Jeff how to find the proper fit for these adjustable climbers. Ideally, the top of the climber should rest about an inch below the joint of the knee. This spot is easily found by placing two fingers on the inside of the leg at the bottom of the knee joint. The top of the climber should just touch the lower finger. With adjustable climbers, proper fit is determined by moving the adjustable portion of the climber up and down until the proper size is reached. Then you secure it in place with locking screws. With fixed length climbers, it's necessary to measure from the point below the knee to the top of the arch on the foot. Once the proper fit is determined, it's necessary to place pads and straps on the top portion of the climber. The pad is secured by passing a strap under one loop on the pad, then through a metal loop on the climber, and through the remaining loops on the pad. The climbers and pads should look like this when finished. Jeff will try on the climber to check the adjustments. The final piece of equipment necessary for climbing is the safety strap, or pole strap as it may be called. A safety strap is used to support a climber when working on a pole, and in some cases as an aid to climbing. Basically, all a safety strap consists of is an adjustable belt and two safety snaps. One snap is fixed in position on one end of the strap. The other snap is part of the buckle and belt assembly and is used for adjustment. The snaps are used to attach the safety strap to the body belt. We'll look at safety straps and how they are used in more detail later in this program. At the beginning of this program, we said that the basic equipment consists of the body belt, a pair of climbers, and a safety strap. There are other pieces of equipment that are used for safety, comfort, and convenience. These include heavy work gloves, safety glasses, and a hard hat. Depending on your procedures when climbing around energized conductors and equipment, rubber goods such as gloves and sleeves may also be worn. In some cases, a lineman may have trouble keeping his body belt in position on his hips. To remedy this situation, many people use a waist strap, sometimes referred to as a gut strap. It's simply a leather belt with clips that attach to the body belt and help to keep it in position. Take some time now to read over the material in your text on climbing equipment and answer the questions. When we return, we'll look at the care, maintenance, and inspection of pole climbing equipment.